my lovelies I hope you're all well so we are in design space today and we are going to use the deboss tool to create an embossed look so the deboss is a tool on the maker or the maker 3 which basically makes an imprint into your card it can only be used with certain materials but it can be used a lot with card now what everyone wants is embossing, which is where the design is raised. And there's a great trick that you can use to create a stencil and then have the deboss tool go through the stencil to create the embossed effect. Now it doesn't work for all images and you do have to choose your images quite carefully but we're gonna go through that quickly now. I've just got a basic card blank here. I'm gonna to go to images and I'll just quickly take you through the sort of images that will work. So text will work as long as it's not too thin. You do want the text to be quite chunky. Now something like this will work really well because you're creating a stencil. So you're gonna take away the design so basically anything you see here in black is going to be removed and it's going to leave behind a recess which means that the deboss tool is going to go where those black lines are because you've got card either side of it this works really well you don't want two thin lines but lines kind of this thickness will work well and as I say because you've got the card left behind either side you've got a nice channel for the deboss tool to go through so an image like that works well text works well but you don't want the text to be too thin something like this will work well because it's just an outline now in theory this should work well but it's quite busy so depending on how busy the image is and the size of the image will depend upon how well this works this wouldn't work small but it would work large now an image like this does not work well at all the reason being is that what the deboss tool is going to do is because there's no outline it's going to follow the moon and it's going to follow the rabbit which means where it's white here is the only bit of card that's going to be left so the actual moon will be removed as your stencil and your bunny will be removed as your stencil and so the deboss has to go around the bunny and around the moon and the only thing that's kind of holding it in place is the card that's left behind as an outline and so this wouldn't work well at all because what you really need is it for to be a solid image or to be an outline image there are rules to that something like these stars would work really well solid hearts would work really well it needs to be solid or it needs to be an outline something like this that's broken between two images is not going to work. I'm going to do the dinosaur and I'm also going to get some text as well. And I'm going to add that to my canvas. I'm going to use my contour to contour away the text on this one. The text does work on this one. But again, because the text is quite small, you need it to be quite large. And I actually want to keep the dinosaur pretty much the size that it is. So I can bring my dinosaur in and then my ra. What I'm going to do is just align them together. So I'm going to go a line and then I always get this wrong. Ah, center horizontally. I was correct. And then nice and easy, I'm just going to weld that together so it becomes one image. What I'm then going to do is create an offset and we've played with this. We've played with it from kind of 0.02 all the way down to sort of 0. or minus 0. 0.04 and we found the sweet spot is minus 0. 0.02. 
click apply to make sure that it goes and then apply again and I'm just going to change the colour of the original image. With the offset I'm going to change it from a cut to a deboss and I'm just going to hide my dinosaur so that you can see how that is going to look. And basically the black outline is what we're going to weed away and that's where the deboss tool is then going to work in that channel. What I want to do is bring this over to my card, get it all nice and lined up and then I'm going to duplicate it once and then twice. With this one I'm just going to change the colour on the card to a purple and then I'm going to take the deboss layer, the offset layer and I'm going to delete that. I don't want that for this one so I'm left with just the cut. I can then attach that together and you can see that we've got the cut out of the card and the cut out of our dinosaur. If I grab my cut out layer from up here what I need to do is make it the same colour as this. Two ways I can do that, I can come up to the colour box and you'll see the purple there or if I go to my colour sink you can see my yellow dinosaur and I can bring it up to my purple. This one here I'm going to change the colour of the card to yellow and I'm going to this time delete the cut layer so that I am left with the deboss of our dinosaur. So this one is the card with the cut out of our dinosaur and this one is the card with the deboss of our dinosaur. Again, I'm going to draw around and attach. And then my deboss dinosaur is here. Now he is going to go onto a separate mat. This one is going to go on the same mat as this one because they're the same colour. But I can't colour the deboss, and it's done by the colour of the card. So we're going to have to manually move him onto the same mat as this one when we go to the next section. That leaves me with just my card outline. You want to make sure that the score line is attached and then we can go to make it. I'm going to select on mat. The first thing I want to do is mirror each of my mats and it's really, really important that you do mirror. You can see there we've got the separate dinosaur and our card. The next thing we're going to do is move our card pieces all the way down to the bottom as far across and as far down as we can go. I've got my deboss image on its own and I need to move it to the layer with my deboss card. So all I'm going to do is click on the circle with the three dots, move object and I can either create a new layer or a new mat, which we don't want to do, or I can move it to an existing mat. And in this case, it's the yellow one because that's the deboss mat. What I'm then going to do is zoom right in. I normally find 125, 150 is a good mark. And I'm going to bring my image on top of the one below. And I want to get it as close as I can. And if we zoom right in, you can see there that we are pretty close. But that is perfect. What I can then do is click on the actual card, come up to the circle with the three dots, and I'm going to hide the card and the image on the card so that I'm left with just that single deboss image. I'm going to do exactly the same with the cut mat. So I'm going to bring the cut on its own over and I'm going to line it up. Again we can zoom in just to check and yet yeah, that is pretty much as it should be. Same thing again if I click on just the card I can go to the circle with the three dots, hide selected and it will leave me just my cutout. 
So I've got one layer that's now empty and that will disappear in a minute. I've got the card layer, which is the score and cut of my card. I've got the deboss of my design and I've got the cut of my design. And the reason we've done it the way that we have is so that we can make sure that everything is lined up between each of these mats. We can then go to continue. Now the first mat I'm going to do is the cut design on its own. Then I'm going to do the deboss layer and then I'm going to do the actual card cutout layer. So we're always going to start with the design cut on its own. Then we're always going to do the deboss and then we do the actual card outline. So I can then click or choose my correct setting and we can cut out our first layer. Now with our first cut, which is the cut of just our image, this is what's going to be our stencil. Now you want to use smooth card for all of this. The smoother the better. This does work with textured card but it doesn't pop as much. And you also want to make sure that your stencil card is thicker than the card you're going to be using to create your actual deboss on. So I've gone for quite a thick heavy cardstock here. You could even use a craft board if you wanted to. And this is going to become my stencil image. And then this is my actual image that's going to be debossed and have my card frame cut out of. This is a lot thinner. It's still a good card, but it's a lot thinner card than this one. You want to make sure when you're putting your mat in that it's butted right up against either this guide if you've just got a maker or both if you've got maker three because you've got to reject your mat between each stage we want to make sure that we get it in as close to the right place each time as we can so if you look at the other side you'll see there's quite a substantial gap so what you want to do is each time you're putting your mat in bring it right up to one of these guides push it right in there so that you know you're putting it in the same position over and over again. Now there is a degree of error with this, it is what it is, but by using this method you're getting it as close every time as you can. So what we want to do is we want to leave this on the mat, we don't want to remove this, but what we are going to come in and do is actually remove the design so that we create a stencil. So what's going to happen now is that the deboss tool is going to come in and deboss around basically where you can see the green of the mat. So I've got my card that I'm going to use and I'm going to come in and place that directly on top. So that's going to go directly on top of our stencil. I'm going to use my brayer to secure it into place. And then where I've got the card underneath, I'm just going to use a bit of masking tape. Not for the whole area, just for where the card is underneath. And I'm just going to add that on so that it just prevents the card on top from moving around. And then again, come in with your brayer and just secure the masking tape as well. So we're going to be using our deboss tool for Maker, which is number 21. You can see here right at the end, we've got the little deboss tip. I've got quick swap housing 
I'm just going to push the button down, place my deboss tip into it and then it's then in the quick swap housing and to release it you just press the button down again. Great thing about the quick swap housing is that you can have just the one and then you can interchange the interchangeable tools for maker. So again this is the deboss tool and it's number 21. I'm going to take out my premium fine point blade and I'm then going to put in my deboss into the B clamp for blades. I've set my deboss setting to medium cardstock and again I'm going to make sure that I'm butting my mat right up to the grids here. I can then load it and it's going to deboss where our stencil is. Next step, we want to remove our masking tape and just a quick tip, rather than pulling your masking tape up, just gently roll it back. It can have a tendency to pull up on your card and I find that if you roll it back, you get a lot less tear. than if you pull it up. We want to leave the rest of our card on our mat. We're just going to lift this up. Look, you can see how amazing that emboss is. And I'm just going to remove the piece underneath. I can then place this back down and again then come in with my brayer. Now just a tip as well, try not to really brayer where it's embossed. You can give it just a gentle and then really kind of go around where the debossing is because what you don't want to do is then flatten this. I'm then going to swap the tip out from my deboss to my scoring wheel number one and if you don't have a scoring wheel you can of course use a scoring stylus don't forget that that goes in the A clamp for accessories again I want to make sure that I'm going right up to this guideline I can then swap that out for my premium fine point blade We can then turn our mat over to remove our card. Remember not to over bend your mat. That's the inside of our card. You can see that that is what the deboss tool normally creates. So it sinks into the card. But because we created that stencil, we have got a lovely three dimensional emboss. How cool is that? It's so amazing. As I say you do need to choose your images quite carefully and you need to think about the channel that the deboss tool is going to go through. You want to make sure that your stencil cardstock is slightly thicker than the card you're going to deboss onto. You also want to make sure that for each mat you're pushing your mat right up against those guidelines and importantly in design space that you get everything all lined up. I can't wait to see what you all create. If you've got any comments or questions please do leave them below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and I will see you all again soon. Bye!